I think it's important when you're looking at this to like separate the the fact versus the opinion. And uh, you know, some of these misconceptions can be refuted just with like, hey, have you actually thought deeply about this? And here, here, here are the facts as we lay them out. You wrote a post on Bankless this week that dives into four misconceptions about proof of stake versus proof of work. And I think this is information that's worth getting out there. Uh, why don't we hit all four of these points, David? What's the first one? Yeah, the first one is uh, the rich do not get richer in proof of stake. This is a common critique of proof of stake is that it's a rich get richer system. And actually, it's completely the opposite. The fact that yield is baked into the asset allows everyone in the world to democratize access to the upside. So there, there is no difference in rate of return for somebody that invests $1 billion into Ether versus $1 million into Ether versus $1,000. Everyone gets the same rate of return. And it actually in proof of work, it's actually the, the, that is the actual rich get richer system because of how much complexity and middlemen there are between $1 of capital and proof of work getting tr translated into $1 worth of hash power. You got to invest in the ASICs. You got to invest in the mining facilities. You got to get the, the ASICs through the supply chains. You got to have relationships with manufacturers. You got to power your facility. You have to cool your facility. And all of these things have respond to economies of scale. And and that is, uh, means that there's significant competition around Bitcoin miners, which Bitcoiners really like, but it is actually indoctrinating who can invest more capital into proof of work most. So that's a misconception number one. The next one is that proof of stake uh, is, is like a equity money and proof of work is commodity money. These are mental models, but like in terms of actual definitions, it's not empirical. There's, there are no empirical definitions. So I go through this and I actually make the claim that Ether has both commodity-like and equity-like characteristics and Bitcoin has mostly neither. Uh, and I explain in the article about that. So that's number two. Uh, proof of stake does not give governance powers to stakeholders. There is a difference between on-chain governance and token vote governance and proof of stake. These are different things. There are systems that are have on-chain governance like uh, Tezos and Decred. Uh, and Tezos is proof of stake. Decred is a hybrid proof of work proof of stake. But the consensus mechanism and on-chain governance are completely different things. And Ethereum does not have on-chain governance. And lastly, Dealing with 51% attacks, how does a proof of work system deal with a 51% attack if the time comes? Basically, the answer is if somebody can generate enough hash power to 51% attack a proof of work network, they have enough hash power to do it infinite in forever. So if the honest miners can't source enough honest hash power to overcome that 51% attack, that proof of work chain is dead because the attacker has enough uh, hash power to attack it into into infinity. The exact opposite thing is true with proof of stake, where if somebody is attacking the proof of stake network, because Ether is registered to Ethereum, unlike ASICs, Ether is actually at a specific Ethereum address. The network it can identify who is the attacking address, where is the attacking ETH coming from, and we can coordinate around a fork to do something about that, whether it's forcibly exiting them from the validator queue or slashing their ether. It's just so much easier to discover and route around an attacker in proof of stake than it is proof of work. Uh, so those are the four big misconceptions that I addressed in this article. I did my best to make this extremely digestible, so I highly encourage everyone to go read it if you are trying to get your learn on about why the hell we're doing this whole proof of stake thing in the first place. I think there is a difference between sort of an opinion on proof of stake versus proof of work and which produces a better money. I mm -hmm. think there can be some variation in opinion there. Sure. But there's also some fact that I think uh, you lay out in these misconceptions, right? It's like, mm -hmm. it's a fact that proof of stake is not more rich get richer than proof of work, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like empirically a fact that proof of work can lead to economies of scale mm -hmm. that help the rich to get richer. So I think it's important when you're looking at this to like separate the the fact versus the opinion. And uh, you know some of these misconceptions can be refuted just with like, hey, have you actually thought deeply about this? And here he, here are the facts as we lay them out. Now there are some disadvantages with, with proof of um, proof of stake for, versus proof of work, like weak subjectivity, there's like some more uh, d deeper deeper answers to, to some of these things, but I don't think these, these misconceptions actually hold up under any scrutiny. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. 
We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anythings, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.